uh, I will describe you how to approach a peripheral smear in a hematology slide, right. So, whenever we are looking at a hematology slide in our uh, exam or uh, in our uh, textbooks, how should be our approach? Number one, which stain we are looking at, right. So, which, which which stain we are looking at? This is a broadly known as Romanovsky stain. Romanovsky stain. Romanovsky stain is a is a family of stain, and in those family of stain, the one of the important one of the important stain is the Jemsa stain. One of the important stain is the Jemsa stain, which we are looking at right now. So, we are looking at a Romanovsky Jimsai stain and in this Jimsai stain, how, how, how I can say that it is a Jimsai stain? You, you will see the RBC as a red color or orange color and, uh, and background will be pale or white. So, right now we are seeing uh, orange or red color of the RBCs, background is pale. So, uh, we are looking at the Romanovsky stain family which is Jimsai stain, right. So, number one. Second thing as I have discussed in earlier uh, discussion, ki whenever we are seeing any image, we must target rule of 5 right rule of 5 rule of 5 means all 5 corners so we have to see all 5 corners 1 2 3 4 so all 4 corners and fifth area will be the central part of the slide so that is how our approach should be whenever we are seeing any slide we should look for the 5 areas all 4 corners and the center after that as i said rule of uh, there are 3 rules right rule of 3 rule of 5 so, number one rule of five, five areas, then you observe and then compare. So, whenever we are seeing any hematology slide, what should be, what should be the uh, target in peripheral smear? What we should look out the first, we should look out the first where is the normal RBC. So, here I am showing you this one is the normal RBC, right. This one is the normal RBC. How, how did I say that this is the normal RBC? In any normal RBC, what you will notice there is a central pallor, right. <coughs> so, in any normal RBC, what I am showing you here, this is the central pallor. How much is, why, why we should discuss about central pallor? Because this central pallor, when you know that this is normal RBC, so how you will say that it is normal RBC, how much should be the central pallor, right? Central pallor is normal central pallor. See what I am saying, normal central pallor. Normal central pallor will be 1 by third of the diameter of RBC. So, whenever we are seeing any normal RBC, central pallor will be 1 by 1 by third of the diameter. Suppose, this is the diameter, 1 by third of the diameter of the RBC will be the normal central pallor as we are seeing 1 by third of the diameter. This is the, you can see, this is the RBC, this is the diameter and this central pallor is approximately 1 by third of the RBC, right. So, this is the normal central pallor. Why we should know that central pallor normal is 1 by third? So, that we can say that ki when to decide it is the when to decide this is the hypochromic anemia hypochromic anemia to decide hypochromic anemia we must remember central pallor will be more than half of the diameter of rbc so when central pallor is more than half of the diameter of rbc this will be hypochromic anemia right but in this case in this case come back to this peripheral smear and look at this smear as i said rule of 5 all five corners all four corners sorry all four corners and the center we are looking at and after that rule of observation rule of comparison what observation we have got Ki central pallor is here so this is the normal rbc comparison comparison with the surrounding rbc see i am writing here number 1 number 2 number 3 these are the three rbcs which i wanted you to notice Ki how they how they are appearing in comparison to this normal rbc right in comparison to this normal RBC, what is the appearance of these RBCs? <coughs> if you look at them, are you seeing central pallor? Are you seeing central pallor in any of them? No central pallor, right? Number one, what we are observing, there is no central pallor. Number two, if you observe the size of these RBC in comparison to the normal RBC, how is the size? Size is smaller or larger? It is a larger one. Size is larger. So, these are the larger RBC. So, all these three RBCs, which are large and they are oval in shape, this is called macroovalocytosis or macroovalocytes. So, we are seeing so many macroovalocytes. So, this will be called as macroovalocytosis, right. 
So, these three RBCs 1, 2, 3 which I had marked these are the larger RBC in comparison to the normal one they are not exactly round they are oval and that is why it is called as macro ovalocytes and what you are noticing there is no central pallor in all of these macro ovalocytes right number one number two when we are looking at the five areas so as I said you must observe right you must observe when we are looking at the central part and you will observe there is one more RBC here can you look at this RBC if you compare with the surrounding RBCs you will notice that in this RBC there is a one a very important and peculiar thing is present and that is that is this blue color dot. So, what is this blue color dot? This blue color dot is the remnant of the nucleus these are nuclear remnant these are nuclear remnants. So, these are nuclear remnants nuclear remnants we all know that it is made up of DNA. So, this nuclear remnant which we are looking at right now this is called as Howell Jolly bodies this is the second important finding which we are noticing Howell Jolly bodies. So, these are Howell Jolly bodies. So, what is the significance of Howell Jolly bodies in exam they ask these questions right Howell Jolly bodies are nuclear remnants see what I am saying these are the questions which examiner will ask you in exam ki what is Howell Jolly body made up of. Howell Jolly body is made up of DNA. So, that is very very important thing Howell Jolly bodies are made up of DNA. Second important thing what we have to understand conceptually Howell Jolly bodies these are these are marker of ineffective erythropoiesis. What is that mean ineffective erythropoiesis what is Howell Jolly body Howell Jolly body is a marker of ineffective erythropoiesis. ineffective erythropoiesis when there is a defect in maturation in the bone marrow because in bone marrow there are immature RBCs right immature RBCs they have nucleus because of the maturation defect or because of the ineffective erythropoiesis the nucleus of immature RBC will remain inside the RBC precursors these RBC precursors from the bone marrow they will come to the peripheral blood and in peripheral blood they will be looking like this which is called as Howell Jolly bodies nuclear remnant made up of DNA right. So, this Howell Jolly body is seen in megaloblastic in this anemia which we are discussing right now in this anemia we are seeing megalo uh, this Howell Jolly bodies. So, we are seeing macro velocytosis Howell Jolly bodies when we are following rule of 5 and that time in the center again we are noticing one more thing and that is this neutrophil right in any normal neutrophil remember what I am showing you this is the neutrophil and in any normal neutrophil it is 3 to 5 nuclear lobes which is normally visible 3 to 5 nuclear lobes, but in this neutrophil what we are observing 1 2 3 4 5 6 7. So, there are 7 nuclear lobes visible in this neutrophil. So, this type of neutrophil where you are having more than 5 lobes remember more than 5 lobes are seen. So, this neutrophil will be called as hyper <coughs> segmented neutrophil. So, hyper segmented nucleus is there hyper segmented nucleus is present in this neutrophil because they are having more than 5 nuclear lobes right. So, this is the third important finding. So, what I am showing you here what I am showing you here in this in this uh, peripheral smear we are observing three important findings number one we are seeing macro ovalocytosis right. So, number one we are seeing macro ovalocytosis what I am showing you here right. So, you can see this is the macro ovalocytosis right. So, this is the macro ovalocytosis macro ovalocytosis second thing we are observing Howell Jolly bodies third thing we are seeing hyper segmented neutrophil right hyper segmented neutrophil more than 5 nuclear lobes are visible. So, this peripheral smear when examiner ask you ki this person is having weakness and is a 50 year old or 60 year old and peripheral smear was given in your exam and examiner is asking ki what is your diagnosis. So, always remember what I have, I have written here three findings macro velocytosis, Howell Jolly bodies hyper segmented neutrophil these are the three characteristic feature of megaloblastic anemia 
and these are famously known as characteristic triad of megaloblastic anemia. So, this is called as characteristic triad of megaloblastic anemia. Characteristic, this is characteristic triad of characteristic triad of megaloblastic anemia. So, it is characteristic triad of megaloblastic anemia. So, whenever this was previous year exam question also right. So, this is how a uh, similar question will be definitely repeated in your all India or NEET PG exam or AIMS exam and examiner will ask you question okay, this peripheral smear what is your diagnosis what you have to what you have to pay attention rule of 5 rule of observation rule of comparison right and in that thing you will notice macro velocytosis how will jolly bodies hyper segmented neutrophil and these are the three characteristic feature of any megaloblastic anemia diagnosis will be done this is the case of megaloblastic anemia.